All right, Sagar, what are you looking at? Well, the world is on brink of nuclear war. Weirdly enough, it's already the second time in my professional, professional life that I've even had to consider it. While the risk of an exchange today may be higher than it was at any time since the Cuban Missile Crisis, many people seem to have forgotten an earlier nuclear scare that may be able to teach us some lessons. In 2017, I became obsessed with the idea of a nuclear war, even in limited in scale. In fact, it's what really ignited my love and interest in World War I, because I was convinced any use of a nuclear weapon of any scale would change the globe in a similar fashion. At that time, Russiagate was in full swing and would eventually put us on the path to where we are today. But the real scare was North Korea. Try and remember the circumstances. North Korea, the hermit kingdom, under the rule of the mysterious and young Kim Jong-un. Jong-un, despite his Western upbringing, had bet the house on development not only of a nuclear weapon, but of an ICBM capable of hitting the United States to fully enshrine mutually assured destruction for the West. In 2017, he got there and he shocked the world. The Wasong-14 showed capability to hit California from North Korea, officially elevating the Hermit Kingdom to one where a war with them wouldn't just be catastrophic for the Korean Peninsula, but would incur millions of deaths here in the United States. And yet, this development, like those in Ukraine today, were dismissed by the Washington foreign policy elite. We had no choice but to continue our policy, which was not only sanctions, but the wholesale cutoff of relations and economic ties between North Korea and the rest of the world until, we they said, they had to abandon nukes. Barack Obama, Barack Obama famously, in his last sit-down with Donald Trump in the Oval Office, told him the biggest problem that Trump would face, probably in office, would be North Korea. And for a time, he appeared correct. Trump in those years was completely distracted by Russiagate and TV ratings. He effectively outsourced all of his foreign policy to the Washington elite. North Korea was no exception. After Kim Jong-un's missile test, he resorted to basically threatening Kim Jong-un with that famous line, fire and fury. Let's relive that. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. He has been very threatening uh, beyond a normal statement. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power, the likes of which this world has never seen before. Fire, fury, and power. North Korea, of course, didn't listen. They just fired off even more missiles, including one into the Japanese economic zone, making it clear they would continue until the status quo changed. Either the West and the rest of the Asian nations removed sanctions on them, which were threatening to collapse the Kim regime and push them further into starvation, or nuclear war. At the very least, an incident sparked by a nuclear test or missile launch would put us on the verge of a catastrophic war in Asia. This already has happened on a similar scale. North Korea has shelled islands and even sank a South Korean submarine. They are reckless. They are comfortable with death and with taking risky maneuvers when their backs are literally up against the wall. Adding nukes to the equation made the stakes existential for the rest of us while it already was for them. And yet, Washington did not budge on the nuclear question. To them, it made no sense to change our policy at all. The idea that Kim Jong-un's newly afforded nuclear status gave him the ability to basically blackmail the US and other Western powers to the negotiating table was too much to bear. The alternative of risking not only tens of thousands of American troops stationed in Korea, but tens of millions of lives in California was an acceptable risk, they said, to accept the already established reality that North Korea has nuclear weapons. Yet, Trump then shocked the world, and he made what I believe to be one of the best things he ever did in his presidency. He just said, you know what, enough. I'm just gonna go meet the guy. The Singapore summit in June of 2018, honestly, did not accomplish anything, but it shocked and changed the situation so much that basically up until just in the last week, we saw a total and complete change in relations between the Kim regime and Washington. Missile tests subsided for the most part. Trump even set foot in North Korea at the DMZ, shook hands with Kim. The leader of South Korea met with Kim. Completely new era of relations was sparked. Yet, here in Washington, his meeting was met with scorn. Disgust, they said, to meeting with a dictator and a murderer like Kim. Gross to give in to blackmail. I still maintain it's one of the most genius things that Trump ever did. And implicit was acknowledging a grim reality. We may not want North Korea to have nukes, but after they literally have one and the capability to bomb us, that's just how it is. In almost every negotiation where the US has asked North Korea to give up its nukes, they say the exact same thing. Well, Gaddafi gave up his nukes, look what you did to him. I mean, K 
Can you argue with that one? Unfortunately, after Trump was defeated, the Biden administration, though, has reverted back to the exact same policy. And lo and behold, we are now having the exact same problem. North Korea just days ago launched a medium range ballistic missile over Japan, scaring the hell out of the population and raising the stakes, reminding the West and the world, hey, we exist. Those sanctions still suck. And you stop talking to us. So what lessons can we learn from this? To me, it's about checking the hubris of Washington. Sure, we might want a world where North Korea does not have nuclear weapons, but we cannot do a damn thing about that at this point. We have to talk to them and acknowledge their status because we're putting America on the line, not to mention our sworn treaty allies in Seoul and in Tokyo. Allies, by the way, who are a hell of a lot better and more important than Eastern Europe and a hell of a lot more important to the global economy. Pretending and wishing does not do anything. Second is that nuclear status is just simply different. It compels weighing risks and giving in on things that we may really, really, really not want to because the alternative is unthinkable. The North Korea situation, the statesmanship of the Trump administration, and the reversion to brain-dead thinking is a mirror image of what is going on in Ukraine. If we lock into the Washington assumption in Ukraine in the same way that we are on the same path to an inevitable war that we were with in North Korea in 2017, except now with Russia, who is a thousand times more powerful, Creative thinking and willingness to challenge assumptions that carry the obvious risk of war are vitally important. We see absolutely none of this in Washington today across either party. Biden, the Republicans, and more are so committed to the current strategy. A nuclear exchange with Russia seems not only a possibility, but frankly, the most likely outcome on a long enough timescale in Ukraine. Perhaps it is possible a Trump-style figure or even Trump himself will shake things up. But as the North Korea situation shows, Unless you follow through or sustain your game-changing move, reversion to the mean is the most likely scenario. I think there's a lot we can learn from North Korea. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.